Tom, welcome to the Innovation Summit. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Uh, today we're going to be talking uh, about a, something a little different than uh, the creative awesomeness that uh, Carl was just speaking about, but somewhat related. Um, we're going to be talking about getting the most out of your creative assets. So, so much time and effort is put into creating amazing uh, media assets, capturing them, capturing them live in the moment, um, and then organizing, storing, being able to find them when you need them. Um, when it comes to marketing, and that's what I specialize in, I'm the CMO for Greenfly, it's all about getting those assets seen by as many people as possible, by as many fans as possible, when, we, when we're talking specifically about sports. That creates real connectivity to the sport um, and to the athletes and to the to the events itself or the events themselves. So the Greenfly platform works uh, in conjunction with Photo Shelter, and we really specialize on in distributing assets to as many people as possible. And those people are generally athletes. They can be broadcasters. They can be influencers, they could be brand ambassadors, they could be uh, customer advocates, they could be students. Um, the, the people that you want to have good creative assets are the people that are going to share them with their own audiences on social media, the people that are going to share them in person with people on their phones. So asset distribution is uh, super important and also asset creation when those athletes, influencers, and brand builders are creating their own social media, being able to collect it in a reasonable way is also um, something that Greenfly facilitates. And you heard Carl say is, is he was a content creator for Major League Baseball. We work with leagues like Major League Baseball to ensure that uh, content can be uploaded directly from live events from the stadium uh, into photo shelter where of course it's organized in the best way possible um, today i'm going to be we're talking to two green flies uh, customer representatives from two different very different sports um, who have created some very inspirational and innovative programs uh, to facilitate live uh, or non-live media distribution to their their athletes in large groups so uh, introducing first, uh, Will from Position Sports. And... Uh, hi, Will Sarden from Position Sports. Um, yes, we specialize in, in, we activate a lot in the grassroots space. Um, we do brand work, sports marketing work um, across many platforms. Um, often, uh, as you mentioned, um, in the youth space uh, that we like to define as grassroots. Uh, specifically, um, we work with a lot of athletes, um, 15 to 18 and then into the college range. Um, so a lot of Gen Z um, with who we're working with. Um, but uh, basketball is a big focus of ours, but we work cross board with, with baseball, um, some football, soccer. Uh, really just depends on the client and the season um, uh, that we're in. But specifically with what we work with your team on, um, and that we function with photo shelter with is is in our basketball space uh, for Nike. Fantastic. Thanks, Will. Um, and next on our panel here is Elise from World Surf League. Hi, Elise. Thanks, Tom. Hi, everyone. I'm Elise Krieger. I'm the director of social media for the World Surf League. I'm currently based in Dana Point, California. Um, my team specializes in live content coverage of our championship tour events um, and taking that content and publishing it across all major social media platforms in real time. Fantastic. So, Elise, you uh, just wrapped up the WSL finals a few weeks ago. Um, as usual, I saw a ton of great media out there uh, being shared during the competition and of course, after after the winners were announced, um, WSL broadcasts its own streams, right? So you've got your own streams on or live stream on your app and website. How do you? What are the main methods that you guys use to drive tune in? How do you get people to tune in right when the event is happening, since it's so hard to schedule? Yeah. Um, so all of social, pretty much all social channels we use to drive tune in. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. 
um, in YouTube as well. Um, so really leaning into the user experiences on those channels, understanding that each channel is a little bit different um, and, and thinking about the perspective of how users track our 10 day window, um, what type of updates do they need and how can they follow along to see when that contest is on. Um, so it's really important for us to use um, branded assets and things like that to update those social profiles when um, we may be going into uh, 24 hours perhaps running and when we're on and things like that. So I think user experience across all of those platforms is key. And do you find that the media that you're using for the event updates and things like that is different from sort of your brand building when um, you're not running a live event? Um, it's definitely real time, real time content. So it is a bit different. Yeah. Um, all of our team is on the ground and um, we're running out to capture the call each morning that's made if we're going to be we're going to be running or not or we're tracking behind the scenes moments with the athletes. So um, everything is definitely way more real time um, and we're capturing and pretty much posting immediately. Great. Um, Will, when you were working when your your team was working with uh, Nike's Elite Youth Basketball uh, League a few months ago, you were trying to get content from matches and from the events in general to the athletes. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that program and and some of the results? Yes. So the um, the Nike YBL or the Nike Elite Youth Basketball League is a league of about 138 uh, Nike sponsored travel teams. So AAU, if you will, um, we compete each spring um, in a normal year, um, generally April to July uh, with four regular season stops that ultimately culminates in a championship. Um, these are athletes, as I mentioned, ranging ages 15, 17, 18 years old. Um, so this year um, during uh, being in COVID, we, we instead uh, brought everyone to what is our traditional host site for the championships for 14 days um, down in Augusta, Georgia, um, where we had regular season and ultimately had our championships. So uh, with respect to COVID, so what we did is it's about 3000 athletes that we um, ultimately um, downloaded to, to, to Greenfly and to the app um, and, and used with photo shelters so that we could uh, then be able to push out content as Elise just mentioned in real time um, to them. Biggest thing is um, there's a lot of noise in the space, if you will, in the sense that everyone now has an iPhone, everyone has this capabilities in their hands where people are producing their own content, um, but it's not necessarily telling our story um, and it's not through our lens. Um, so what we did was to be able to push out the content directly to them. Um, we partnered with you all um, and we basically allowed our athletes to have access to their the photos, imagery, videos from their games. Um, almost immediately following uh, their competitions over the course of the 14 days. Um, we found this worked two ways. One, we could continue to tell our story, but also like it engaged the athletes um, during their downtime as we had the 14 days together. So um, that was kind of the, the just of our, our programming for this summer um, with that. Um, we found some great success with doing it. Um, it really in, engaged our athletes. Um, but also, like I said, enabled us to continue to tell our story through the lens that, that we wanted to. And when you um, frame it that way, are you, are you you're supplying media to the athletes? The athletes are actually telling their story, not realizing that they're telling your story at the same time. Correct. So we have, like I mentioned, it's about three thousand athletes from all across North America, and and a lot of the athletes, some are international from you know, Africa, from Europe, from all over. Uh, we have teams that come from Canada that, um, you know, compete and play in our, our program. And then you, there's all these athletes speaking to their communities. They have their own colloquialisms. They have their own way that they they tell what's relevant and popular in, in D.C. is not the same as it is in Los Angeles. Um, and so through product placement, through building immersive environments, that this backdrop that you, if you will, um, from our event with branding and, and making taking over an immersive experience that with visually we can do that and then they can then add you know they can add their terminology their colloquialisms the, the they can speak to their friends to their communities a lot better than we can um, but we're being very strategic with product placement with um, with the visuals of it um, so it can continue to tell our story and, and bring people into 
what we what we frame as an exclusive group, an exclusive environment, um, and and they can speak back to to their friends and families back home. So they're almost putting a local lens on the event for you. They are. They are. They are. Um, at least you're distributing media beyond your own owned social channels. Um, are you finding that that delivers the same value? Yeah, it's great to to hear from our athletes and and really see their personal touch on um, the assets. You know, we the the unique thing around our championship tour is we travel to the, some of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, and these, you know, they call it the dream tour. And these athletes, you know, their their job is an actual dream. So they are more than happy to post. They they definitely want to share all the assets that we're providing to them. And um, as we are, you know, going into pre-event mode and and um, live mode and then wrap up mode, you know, they're very um, eager to to share those assets and tell their story of of their journey on on the tour. So yeah, it's been great. Fantastic. So framing it in in a new way, a local way, a, a personal way, I guess, is is one of the, the benefits of not promoting all of your own assets yourself, right? You're getting different views on and different uh, a different focus on the same piece of media from different people even. Um, so when you uh, had to onboard 3,000 athletes, Will, was that a daunting task? Did it go pretty well? What was what was that activation experience like? With with the support of your team, it honestly it took. We did it over the course of two days. Um, it, we were able to make a unique group, uh, unique codes, and and it was fairly seamless. Um, you know, there's always going to be that miss. There's always the education um, of of it. But um, you know, Gen Z with our our athletes, their their age range, they love technology. They love new things. They love content. Um, and so getting them to, you know, they go to those quick education sessions and, and, and they're ready to go. Um, I think the biggest thing for them was it's the newness of this game, video from this game out that, um, and that was probably the, the, the they had to up, this was like, oh, it's actually here um, in one place. So that piece was, was great. But no, it was daunting. It was, um, as I mentioned, it was fairly seamless. It went fast and, and, and you know, they're quick adapters. Fantastic. Um, and knowing that Gen Z is obviously digital first and extremely capable of, of dealing with mobile, um, it's one of the one of the reasons that traditional media is is changing um, to adapt to the new the new preferences of Gen Z to to find those younger fans. Um, at least, do you have any advice for the audience here on um, things that you've done or uh, experiences that you're having right now with your with your promotions to attract more and more Gen Z younger fans to the sport? Yeah, I think one thing that speaks volumes for us on social is just the simplicity of being consistent. Um, having that consistency in your brand content and producing great content um, every single day, certain times a day is is one thing that um, builds that loyalty and those, you know, those brand relationships, people can wake up and know that it's going to be there. Um, when it comes to, you know, leaning into new and, and younger demographics as well, you know, platforms such as TikTok have been huge for us. Um, and just realizing who else is out there um, that's interested in surfing. The demographic on that platform for us is so different. Um, it's definitely not core. It's younger. Um, they may live in the middle of the state, but they want to know about surfing and they want to fall in love with it. So I think, you know, tapping into apps for opportunity like that is is huge as well. Um, you just mentioned TikTok, which just surpassed a billion users. Uh, what, what do you think that fast rise is saying about uh, consumption with younger audiences? What are they really looking for when they turn to TikTok? And are you are you trying to meet that need? Yeah, I, I definitely don't have um, all the answers to that, but we do aim to meet that need and, and really are just learning um, that the, the users and the experience is just so different than the other apps. So how can we share surfing and share what we're doing as a league um, in that uh, formula to, to build those relationships with them? So it's definitely different content creation. It's different language. Um, it's different distribution. So, you know, we're happy to, to kind of 
just use that to, to build and learn about who, who else is out there and share our, our sport with them. Can you give an example of um, something you thought was successful recently on TikTok? Yeah, so similar. Um, I think one thing that, you know, that makes that app so different is everything is changing um, by by the day and by the week on that platform. Um, so, you know, figuring out what is the best way to translate us as a league um, to those users. So if something is happening on that app, whether it's a trend or a song or something that people are doing, um, a good translation for us would be to use one of our surfers, our athletes, our influencers, um, to participate in that and personalize that and share that with that audience. So um, working with people on a on a one on one level level, whether it's our athletes or um, brand ambassadors, is is one of the ways that we've seen uh, the most success. So you'll reach out to an athlete and say, "Hey, we just saw this happen on TikTok. Would you reproduce that in your own way?" Or it's a it's a much more intimate, personal uh, request from them. Yeah, if it's a good fit for them, um, if it's something that is aligned with them and that they would be a good fit for, yes. Um, we have a couple content creators that are large in the surf space um, as well, and we find that our audience really, you know, resonates with them and enjoys the content that they make. I think mostly because they're just surf kids um, around the same age as, as the people that are viewing uh, the videos. Great. Will, do you have any TikTok insights? Did your did your athletes move to TikTok? Did you measure anything going on there? We did not measure TikTok. Um, our athletes are on TikTok. Um, that's a, a big space. We did not um, dive into that this year um, from from our group. Um, we know that they're uh, similar to what Elise said is is the ability to translate what we're doing into that space and, and keep up the trends, you know, change, change constantly. The thing I was seeing the other day was there was like a NASCAR pit crew. Like I think it was the most watched TikTok of the day of basically these two pit crew guys, like reenacting what they're doing. It just, it's, you never, the, the landscape changed so quickly um, as to what's captivating that day or that time. Um, so we know our athletes are there. Um, they're creating the content there, which is, I think, the great thing about TikTok. Um, they, I, our content um, went from what we provided to TikTok, um, but we did not track that space uh, in right. this season, but that is in, in plans down the road. Great. Well, you know it's, it's going there, so that's uh, always interesting to see how, how media morphs and, and that will what the kids are doing with it every, you know on a daily basis obviously it, it's uh, constantly changing like you said um so from a, a media standpoint the the program that you ran seemed to be very successful with uh, the athletes really participating you said you were uh, able to capture their attention even during their downtime do you foresee um, broadening this in any way on the next season or rolling it out to different leagues? Yes. Um, actually, we, we were at, in that conversation this morning. Um, we look to, with the success we had, we are, are looking to incorporate this program and, and the, the way we're delivering this content um, to several other programs we're doing. They will not necessarily to the scale, but um, as is, is transitioning what we're doing and being able to communicate our story um, through our lens. As I said, a lot of things we do is visual, it's product driven. Um, and so to be able to do that, um, and to our athletes, um, on smaller scale events, we're going to continue to push it out um, through that uh, um, and allow our story visually. Um, so uh, over the next 12 months, we'll have um, a handful more programs that are going to be run out and then regular fact. That's fantastic. And then um, so, it was it was also great to hear that uh, you were able to leverage Photo Shelter as the event grew and you needed to uh, distribute more media to more people. So having having that flexibility was was pretty key. Um, at least what tips or other advice would you give organizations, well, especially sports organizations, to um, try and maximize the value of their digital media inventory, wherever it's stored? 
Yeah, I think, you know, one thing that has just been so great for us is is leaning into our athletes and building those relationships with them and having them be excited and, and want to share um, those brand stories and the content with us. Um, so whether it's sharing, you know, photos from an event or having them um, work on a TikTok piece with us or having us, you know, promote other um, initiatives that our brand has, it's I think working with our athletes is it's been such a great form of storytelling. Um, they all have such strong audiences and um, they're just, you know, they are what makes up the World Surf League. So I think working with our athletes has been one of the biggest things that's, that's always key for us. When you first started working with athletes to either give them media to share or ask them to participate uh, beyond the traditional photo shoot type uh, event, were they receptive to that? Yeah, I think it's really all about finding um, the best fit for, for each um, project. You know, all athletes and, and humans are different. Some may not be as keen, but others, you know, are really excited and they love it. So I think understanding, um, you know, the different athletes and who would be a good fit for what is um, the best way to do that. Great. Um, Will, do you have any advice on maximizing the value of your digital media inventory? Um, yes, I mean, the biggest thing I think I've, I've said it a few times is, is the ability to provide, um, to be able to provide the athletes the content um, is, the, is the biggest thing. Um, they're media hungry, um, they push out a lot, they are constantly living in the digital age. So um, I think we uploaded something close to 10,000 photos and um, if not more, um, during our project that we worked with you all in Photo Shelter on, and um, most of all of those were consumed um, and and pushed out in some frame or the other. And um, biggest thing is the ability to to create a seamless process in doing that um, is ultimately going to help push it forward. Fantastic. Um, we have a few minutes left, so I wanted to see if we had any questions from the audience. Hi. Okay. Yeah, I'll jump in here. Um, lots of conversation about TikTok um, in the live chat and some great, um, I mean, people just want to know about TikTok. I guess just one question for uh, anybody that keeps coming up uh, time and again is kind of, uh, let's say the balance between TikTok being um, a new platform, right? And like, there's always what's next year. And I think someone earlier today asked, you know, what do you think the platform of a year or three years is going to be? So I want to kind of dive into that and, you know, just what, how do you uh, approach, okay, we know it's time to get into this platform. We, we know there's this new con content platform. Um, how do you approach that? Um, both Tom, I'd love to hear as well, kind of from Greenfly and how you all at Greenfly think about, um, you know, what platforms you're going to expand to and when's the right time and things like that. From our perspective, the right time to expand to a platform is when one of our customers wants to dive into that platform, um, which is usually when it becomes a little bit more mainstream, not super early in the life cycle, because every platform takes, you know, mind share and focus and you really have to understand it. So until it becomes a big enough place to engage their audience, um, they keep it on the radars and they're looking at it, but they're not necessarily producing content for it. Mm -hmm. um, TikTok obviously went really quickly and what we're seeing is a lot of um, custom and follow on work, but uh, not unless it's a mascot being the, the, an organization's representative on TikTok, it's hard to get uh, consistent branding on TikTok, unless you're going through a person, that's what we've that's what we've seen anyway. Sure, definitely. And I, I'm thinking about like the way our the Photo Shelter Greenfly integration works in terms of like it seems so vital to like the one component of TikTok is the creator, right? The end creator. Right. Our integration seems like about you know sort of taking those visual assets you know, that somebody else has created and putting it in the hands of that end user. Um, you know, I think about I, a lot of our clients, shared clients that are kind of the photographers sending it to the athletes through Greenfly and things like that. 